Selected Pioneer Nex in-dash receivers feature Android Auto, which extends the Android platform into the car in a way that's purpose-built for driving. And it automatically brings you useful information and organizes that information into simple cards that appear just when you need them. Android Auto is designed to minimize distraction so you can stay focused on the road ahead. So let's take a moment now and check out Android Auto, how to set it up and how to use it on your Pioneer Nex in-dash receiver. The on-screen operation in this demonstration is identical for the following Pioneer Nex models. MVH2300 Nex AVH2300 Nex AVH2330 Nex AVH3300 Nex On the back of your Pioneer Nex in-dash receiver, there is one USB port. That's shown right here. This USB port can be used for Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay, or playing back music, movies, or still images, all from a USB thumb drive. Your Nex in-dash receiver includes a USB extension in the box. Now plug this USB extension into the USB port on the back of the receiver. Then run this extension cable up into the passenger compartment of your vehicle. And then use the proper phone connection for your particular device. If you want, you can use the cable that came with your phone for Android Auto. That'll work fine. Or you can use an optional Pioneer cable and keep that cable in your vehicle. For phones utilizing a micro USB connection, Pioneer offers the CDMU200. This cable is a USB-A connection at one end, and that will plug into the USB extension included with your next receiver. And it's a micro USB at the other end that will plug into your compatible phone. For phones utilizing USB-C, Pioneer offers the CD-CU50 cable. This cable is a USB-A connection at one end, and that will plug into the USB extension included with your Pioneer Next receiver, and it's a USB-C connection at the other end that will plug into your compatible phone. Do I need additional software on my phone or on the in-dash radio to make Android Auto work on my Pioneer Next in-dash receiver? Let's start with the in-dash receiver. Go to pioneerelectronics.com and download and install the latest firmware updates for your particular in-dash receiver. Now on your phone, you'll need the Android operating system version 5.0 or higher. In addition to Android version 5.0 or higher, you'll also need the Android Auto app. So go to the Google Play Store and download and install the Android Auto app on your phone. For additional apps that work on Android Auto, I'm going to check the Android Auto app when it's not plugged into my uh, Pioneer Next receiver. So you can see right now I've got nothing plugged into the receiver. This is just the phone standalone. And I'm going to go to my uh, Android Auto app right here. We'll open that up. And I'm going to touch the settings up here. And we're going to go to apps for Android Auto. This opens up the Google Play Store and shows me the full list of compatible apps for Android Auto. You can see there are loads of them. Install the ones you like best. Let's take just a moment and check some of the settings on the Android Auto app on your phone. Now please note, we're not connected to the in-dash receiver at all right now. So I'm going to touch uh, my Android Auto app to fire it up and we'll go to the settings. Now there are a couple of important settings here to take a note of. Uh, the first one is connected cars. Let's, so let's open that and take a look. Um, these are other, other vehicles that this uh, phone has been connected to to work with Android Auto. And this will list the rejected cars. There's none in that list. Very importantly is down here, add new cars to Android Auto. If this is switched off, when the first time you plug your phone in uh, to the in-dash receiver, it may not recognize the in-dash receiver and won't connect to it. So if you're having that trouble, make sure you have add new cars switched on. We'll go back. If you're not getting notifications on screen and you want to see those, make sure you have the notifications switched on. You can choose to switch that on or off. Now, before I plug my phone in for the first time, I want to check a setting on the in-dash receiver uh, to make sure that everything will be ready to go. I'm going to touch the gears here, 
and I want to go to the toolbox and scroll down through the toolbox until we find Android Auto Auto Launch. We want that switched on. Now if you don't want Android Auto to switch on when you plug in your phone, you can switch Android Auto off right here. It won't automatically launch. You'll have to go to the phone to launch it. Uh, but I want that to automatically launch when I plug it in, so I'm going to leave Android Auto Auto Launch switched on. We'll hit the X, and now I'm going to plug in my phone for the first time. So we plug in the phone, and the phone is recognized by the receiver, but it says, hey, wait a minute, you've got to stop your car and engage the parking brake to get past this. So you can see on the phone, Android Auto will resume when your car is parked and the parking brake is engaged. You see the same message over here. So I'm going to engage the parking brake. Now that gets past that first screen. I can scroll down here and accept the terms from Android Auto. And I've got to agree to allow Android Auto access to information about my location, calls, and so forth. We'll continue on that. And we'll say allow here. And then the system will power up Android Auto. The first time the system powers up, and this is just the first time, there's a short tutorial here available to walk you through some of the operation of Android Auto. You should walk through that thing if you've never seen it work before, but I'm going to skip it right now. This takes us directly out to the Android Auto screen. Now, Android Auto can do a bunch of things for us, but let's take a short tour of Android Auto before we get started. Uh, this is the home screen, and we'll see different information here, like missed phone calls or text messages, uh, voicemail messages. Those will appear here as cards. Over here, we have uh, our navigation system, and right now we're set to Google Maps. We could also choose Waze as our navigation system if you're a Waze user. For right now, I'm going to keep this working with Google Maps. Here's our telephone system. And I can open a keypad here. I can make my, I see my incoming and outgoing calls. And I can get uh, different phone information here. But realistically, I'm going to do all of my phone calls by voice. Over here, we have music that we can play back. Right now we're on a classical radio channel. If I want to choose a different app to play back music, touch the same button again, and we have a number of different apps that are available. There are loads of apps available for Android Auto. This is just a small sampling of those apps. And uh, over here, we have the option to go back to the Pioneer system. Here we can return to Pioneer. There's a number of different ways that we can return to the Pioneer system from Android Auto. This is just one of them and the center here is back to uh, the home screen. To interact with Android Auto while you're driving, what you want to do is use your voice whenever possible. There's a couple of different ways that you can use your voice, uh, but you have to get the computer's attention first. And number one way, way we can do that is to touch the microphone button right here. Uh, we also have a microphone button right here that we can use. Uh, and if you have steering wheel controls available to you and you've installed the third-party adapter, it's very easy to map one of your steering wheel controls to activate the microphone button. So the first thing that we'll do is make a phone call. Call Felonius. Calling Felonius Mobile. So you can see that we've connected this phone call with Felonius, and we have some information happening on the screen here. Uh, we have the name of uh, the person that I'm calling and the time of the call. Here is a keypad in case we need to punch in numbers while we're on the call. Here are Bluetooth functions. We can use this as a speaker speakerphone excuse me, or a handset if you want to. Right now we're going to use uh, the Bluetooth function which means hands-free calling inside the car and over here we can mute the call and we can switch that mute back off. When I'm done with the call all I have to do is hit the red button to hang up. Now we'll use the hard key microphone button here and we'll send a text message. Send a text message to Reginald. Text 
Next, Reginald. Sure. What's the message? How about lunch? Here's your text to Reginald. How about lunch? Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Okay. Message sent. As you can see, we're now back on our telephone home screen, or we could be back on uh, the overview screen. It doesn't matter where you are. When you receive a text message, that message will come in as a notification across the top of the screen. So here's the new message from Reginald, and you can see that I automatically sent back a message to Reginald that says, I'm driving right now. If I want to hear that message from Reginald, I'll just touch the screen. Reginald says, sounds great. What time do the festivities begin? Do you want to reply? Yes. What's the message? Let's make it 12 noon. Here's your text to Reginald. Message, let's make it 12 noon. Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Okay. Message sent. When a phone call comes in, you'll hear the phone ring and you can see who the, uh, the incoming caller is. To answer this call, all I have to do is touch anywhere in the blue. To reject the call, I can hit the X. We'll answer this call. Now I have the exact same information on the screen uh, when I've received a phone call as when I've made a phone call. And when this phone call is complete, I can just hit the red telephone button to hang up. If I go back out to my overview screen, you can see the list of things that have happened here. We can also use the uh, Android Auto system for full turn-by-turn -turn instruction for navigation. All we have to do is input a destination. Navigate to PPG Paints Arena. Okay, PPG Paints Arena. Here we go. So we told the system by voice where we wanted to go. That opened Google Maps. Head south on Bayfield Road toward Cottonwood Court. That opens up Google Maps and creates a route to go to that destination. And here we can get information about where we're going to go. south on Bayfield Road toward Cottonwood Court. We can recenter the map here. Now if I touch the screen, I can bring up my zoom in and zoom out functions. So I can zoom out a little and see the wider view of where I'm going to go. And over here on Google Maps, we have our uh, recent places that we've been to, different categories. And I have the traffic uh, uh, check mark there, so I get real-time traffic data and reroute around traffic if I want to. We'll go back now. And if I want to cancel this route, I'm going to recenter my map and hit the X to cancel that route. You're using a modern Android phone with at least version 5.0 on it to operate Android Auto through the in-dash receiver. That also gives you all of the power of Google at your fingertips. And if you have your phone set up that way, you can use the power of OK Google. What is George Washington's birthday? George Washington was born on February 22, 1732. OK Google. Am I going to need a jacket today? Today in 15101, expect a high of 14 degrees and a low of 5 degrees. Okay, Google. Do the Penguins play hockey tonight? Pittsburgh Penguins will play Columbus Blue Jackets today at 7 p.m. Okay, Google. Call Felonius. Calling Felonius Mobile. When I'm on a telephone call, it's very important to be able to change the volume of the call inside your vehicle. And all I have to do to change that volume is to touch the volume control right here. And here you can see I'm adjusting the volume that's on the bottom. This is the Bluetooth telephone call volume. So this is not This is completely independent of the source volume, which is whatever music that you happen to be listening to. We're not changing that volume at all. We're changing the volume of the Bluetooth telephone call that's happening right now. 
We also have the guidance volume there. Let me get that back up on the screen. We have the guidance volume available here. This is uh, how loud Google will talk to, talk to you and how loud the instructions will be on turn-by-turn -turn instruction. So you have independent volume controls for both systems there. If I touch the home button, I can go out to the Pioneer screen and we'll go out to the AV radio source. So here you can see we're on the HD radio source and I have my volume control available. Now I still could be listening to or using turn-by-turn -turn instruction from Android Auto even though I have the Pioneer system up on the screen. So I have two different um, uh, volume controls there as you can see. We have the guidance volume and the HD radio or the source volume. If I want to go back to Android Auto, there's a couple of different ways to do that. I can touch the button right here to swap screens. That takes me back to Android Auto and back to the Pioneer screen. I can touch my home button. And on my home screen now, since I have a phone plugged in, I have an Android Auto button and a Nexus 5 button. So we'll touch the Android Auto button. That'll take me directly back over there. I can touch the button on the far right here and return to Pioneer takes me right back out to my home screen. So right now I have I don't have any phone connected. There's no Android Auto connected to the system. And as I adjust the volume, you see we have the HD radio volume available, but no guidance volume is available right now because again, I don't have the phone connected. When I have the phone plugged in again, Now I have two different volume controls. I have the guidance or the Android Auto volume and I have the volume, the independent volume for the HD radio.